Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Maisie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Welcome to the final episode in the series of Finding Balance as a High Achiever when you are rebooting from your out-of-control behavior with pornography, sex, or masturbation. We're going to start with the most important skill set when it comes to balancing your life as a high achiever, and that is focusing on what is useful. You have to be able to choose where to direct your energy, and you want to focus on the past, present, and future, but only based on what is serving your growth and well-being right now in the moment. I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to do that in this episode, and I'm going to be sharing some of the coping strategies that you can use. Now, a quick reminder, okay? If you are a high achieving man, you are usually relapsing for the same reasons. You usually deal with a lot of burnout. You are very driven by your goals and your milestones. And even when you accomplish them, you feel very empty on the inside. You don't know how to turn off your, your nervous system. So you're always on. You rarely slow down. It leads to chronic stress, which is not just dangerous when it comes to slips and relapses, it's just dangerous for your health in general. You overcome obstacles. That's what you do. That's your thing. But you ignore your emotional well-being while you're doing that. You are absolutely focused on winning, but regardless of how much you win, you find out that you are rarely fulfilled. And at the end of the day, you still want to be seen as a successful person, but you found that over the years, you are always prioritizing external validation and you prioritize that over genuine connection, and that kind of leaves your, a lot of your relationships just don't have depth. You look around you and you're just like, man, outside of maybe some family members and one or two close friends, I have a lot of superficial relationships. So those are some of the things that cause you to actually slip and relapse. So what are the benefits of developing these coping strategies that are going to prevent you from slipping and relapsing? Well, the benefits are, first of all, when you start using the system, it prevents burnout. So what happens is using the system causes you to shift from that constant hustle to more of a prioritized effort. You start maintaining high performance without sacrificing your health and well-being. Again, I said that this involves focusing on the past, present, and future, but only on the things which serve you. So you have to be able to pick a season that you're going to work on and pick the things you're going to prioritize in that moment. Some of you are trying to win at everything all the time. Brother, you cannot do that, okay? You're going to get burnt out. The system is also going to help you to enhance your relationship. So you will start moving from surface level success, and you're going to start to, to build deeper and more meaningful connections, which is going to reduce that feeling of isolation that you have. Listen, when you're working really hard and you have big goals, I get it. You've got to you got to put yourself in a little cave sometimes and just go at it. Listen, it is a Monday morning for me. This is my supposed to be my day off. So, maybe if your day off is or days off at the weekends, consider this my weekend. But it's a Monday morning and as much as I would like to completely take the day off, I'm going to take half the day off. I'm going to take half the day off because I committed to myself that I was going to complete this podcast series. And there are many other things that I want to talk about. So I'm going to get my commitments done. However, yesterday, I realized, and the day before too, I realized that I had not been spending enough time with my partner. So we set up a date night. We went out, we went dancing. We had a good dinner. No regrets there. I was, I was out later than I usually am. And while that kind of cut into some of the other things that I had to do, it was something that was a priority for me. So I did what was necessary and the sacrifice was going to be the first half of today. So I get it. That's my point. I get that we have to put ourselves aside sometimes, but doing that 
when you don't know how to manage your out-of-control behavior, doing that when you don't know what your priorities are, are going to make you feel very lonely, right? You're going to feel very isolated. And you wonder why. It's like, why am I lacking in that connection? Another benefit of using these coping strategies is that it is going to transform all the stress that you experience into resilience. You're going to become an individual who actually learns from stressful situations. Now, there's two types of stress. There's just like the short-term stress that you experience when you're doing something that is uncomfortable. There's a part of your brain called the amygdala, and the amygdala releases like pleasant neurotransmitters that makes you just feel good when you're doing things you enjoy, when you're doing things that are comfortable to you. However, when you have to do something that is uncomfortable, something that is new, then you start experiencing stress. And it is the stress of breaking away from that which is comfortable. Now, on the other hand, and that's a short-term stress, on the other hand, we have long-term chronic stress, which comes from constantly working, constantly hustling, not giving yourself a break. That is the bad stress. That is the stress that you're medicating with your out-of-control behavior with pornography. You want to be able to tell the difference between the good short-term stress and the long-term stress. The short-term stress, your ability to overcome that again and again and again leads to resilience. It makes you a stronger person mentally because while other people will struggle with letting go of things that are comfortable, you do it on such a consistent basis because you already know that, ah, oh, this stress is temporary. And once I overcome it, I will get to a level that I'm never going to drop down from. So that's one of the things these coping strategies do for you. Next is they teach you how to find fulfillment beyond the achievements that you have. You begin to learn how to start embracing this. It's a sense of worth, a sense of worth that is not tied to your external results. That's not tied to the number of clients you have, to how much you have in the bank, to how big your house is, to how your body looks. And what that does is that it begins to alleviate, you know, that emptiness that you feel when you hit a big goal and you're like, ugh, like what was the point? It alleviates that because you are no longer connected to it. You're still going to be the same high achiever, hard driving person. But when you hit your goal, you still feel good. You, you're, you're just like, I'm good. I'm good. Like, I don't feel empty. My life is awesome, but not just based on these things. The last two things that you gain from these coping strategies are you learn, this is the one place I will use balance and I'll use it outside of priorities, but you learn how to balance your deep drive with self-care. And of course, in order to do that, you need to prioritize rest and recovery. You need to ensure that your energy and focus is there for your long-term success rather than for short-term wins. Now, the reason why I'm doing a half day is because the rest of the day, I am going to do nothing. Like I'm literally going to turn my phone off. I'm going to zone out. I'm probably going to catch up on the, like two movies I and my girl want to watch. We're going to introvert heavy. And I'm super, super excited about that. But that's rest and recovery. Like I'm, I'm not doing anything that's going to put any pressure on me. Like I'm going to veg out. I'm just excited talking about it. The final benefit of the coping strategy is you start to align the actions you're taking with your deeper values. Some of you are lost. Like, are you lost? You're taking action and you're just like, I'm doing this because this is what I have to do. You know, I got to pay the bills. The business has got to survive. I've got to make it in life. I've got to have a job. I've got to this and this. What is the value that this is backed by? This will teach you how to achieve goals that resonate with your true desires. And this leads to a more satisfying and purpose-driven life. Let's talk about the different strategies that high achievers can use to manage some of these states. The first is emotional reboot capital. And under emotional reboot capital, you have to develop what I call emotional fitness. Now, there are five ways to do this. Of course, within the program, we have group sessions and there are also one-on-one -on -one sessions available where we can walk you through this and teach you the actual skill set. But the first is you just have to expand gradually. So you want to practice handling small emotional challenges before you take on big ones. And this is how you build your resilience over time. Often within the group, when brothers stay accountable, we're able to tell when somebody is trying to handle way too many emotional challenges at a time. 
You know, sometimes in life you're handling one emotional challenge, but something unfortunate could happen. You might be in the process of losing a loved one, going through a break, or something is happening to somebody or something you care about. And at that point in time, you have to learn how to prioritize your emotions. Many of us have not been taught how to do that. And so we believe that we need to now handle all our emotional things at the same time. But this is not how you build resilience. This is instead how you collapse under the pressure of these strong emotions. You know, best case scenario is that you start using a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with it. And worst case scenario is you actually get traumatized by these and you become fearful of dealing with them in the future. Next is you have to stretch your comfort zone, which means that you want to start leaning into discomfort, but you want to do so in manageable doses. Too many high achievers who are trying to end their behavior with pornography put themselves in very uncomfortable situations very early. This is the reason why during your first year of rebooting, we do not recommend that you make any big changes in life. We don't recommend that you go through a divorce. We don't recommend that you get into a brand new relationship. We don't recommend that you change states. We don't recommend that you get a new job because this is way too much discomfort for the current emotional coping strategies that you have. Right now, you're going to use pornography and sex to deal with it. And you're going to keep using porn and sex to deal with it until you feel that you're in a good place with whatever that is, that job, that relationship, that breakup. But unfortunately, while you're doing this, you're causing so much damage to your psyche and to your brain. When you lean into discomfort in small doses, then you're training your nervous system to tolerate more stress. That's how resilience is built. The next is rest and recovery. You've got to learn how to give yourself time to recover after an emotional challenge. And I don't see anyone, or rather I don't see enough people training men on how to do this. Nobody's thought how to just take a break when you're dealing with something emotional. You know, we've had clients in the group who go through breakups, who go through really tough situations, and I tell them, just take time off work. They're like, oh, no, I'm not going to take time off work. I'm going to lose so much money. I'm like, brother, you are going to lose so much more if you do not take that break. There is no shame in admitting that you do not have the emotional resilience at that particular point to deal with something. I consider myself to be a rather emotionally and mentally resilient human being. But even I take a break when I check in with myself and I realize like, damn, bro, that was a pretty intense situation. You need to give yourself a little bit of a break. It doesn't make you a bitch. It doesn't make you less of a man. And we can help you find ways. It doesn't have to be the same way. Every man is different. Oh, find different ways for rest and recovery that suits your personality and your lifestyle. Next is you got to stay in the present. So you have to learn how to focus on the present moment when your emotions feel so overwhelming. And this is what keeps you grounded. Finally, there is consistency over time. This emotional fitness that I'm talking about happens with regular practice, just like any sort of fitness activity that you're building up. It doesn't happen all at once. If you go to the gym and you're trying to put on muscle, you're trying to get lean, you're trying to lose body fat, you're not going to have that happen in a month or in 60 days. You have to build on small wins. Now, you might be wondering, well, how the heck do I do that with my emotions? You know, I, I barely know how to feel them. I'm numb to a lot of them. It sounds like a lot of work. Here's the beautiful part of the porn reboot system. When you're in a group, if you can give at least two hours a week, that's just 20 minutes a day, excluding the time that you spend in the group, maybe 45 minutes to an hour each week for your group meetings, then what happens is you are doing this as you're living your life. Every single day you are experiencing a wide range of emotions and you have time put aside to actually acknowledge these emotions. You have time within the program when you are staying accountable, when you show up to the sessions to do this. So you don't need to worry about, oh, how am I going to build my emotional fitness on a week-to-week -week basis? Don't worry about it. Within the program, we teach you how to set it up in your life. And when you leave the program, these things are already automatic habits for you. 
The next strategy is building supportive relationships for growth. Relationships are so important when it comes to being a high achiever. I know this might be a little bit counterintuitive because you may feel that, listen, the only relationships I need are those with my family and those with the people I work with. And that's fine. I know there are a lot of people who are successful who only have those relationships. But if he wants to be an, a high achieving, successful individual who is happy and fulfilled and free from compulsive behaviors, this is what you need to do. You need to build supportive relationships. Understand that firstly, there is safety in connection. This means that you have to find people who can help you feel calm and supportive in who you are and who you are becoming. What does this do for you as a high achiever? Brother, it allows you to take risks and grow. I can't count the number of ambitious, successful, high achieving men that I talk to who constantly say, you know what, I, I know I need to delegate. I need to open that new department. I need to hire an assistant. I need to do all of these things. And you're not doing those things. You're not doing those things because you don't want to connect with people. Your employees are not going to tell you to do it. Your clients are not going to tell you to do it. Your family might say you need to do it, but they're not experts at your business or your career. You want to be around a group of your peers who can help you feel calm, who help you feel supported in your emotions. That's the way you take risks and grow without long-term stress. Next is you have to communicate clearly. So you need to be in a place where you can be open about your needs and where you can learn how to listen carefully to others. A lot of high achieving men do not have the patience to listen to others. We sometimes have men who will become a part of the intensive and then they get very agitated. Why? Because you don't fucking listen to anybody. All you do is you fucking go out there and you tell people what to do. In fact, some of them are joining the intensive because they have problems with their wives. You hear your wife, but you never actually listen to her. And when you have to sit down and listen to other successful men share, you can't do it. Listen, I used to have that problem as well. I went from somebody who could not listen to anybody at all to somebody who has no choice but to listen. We deal with men's problems. If I'm not able to listen to their problems, I am not able to hear them. And that is a skill that I learned while I was rebooting. Strong relationships require understanding. And trust me on this, to get to your ideal life, you're not going to do it alone. You're going to have to have strong relationships with some key people in your life, in your business, key business partners, who are the ones who are going to help you move forward. You must have that. The third thing when it comes to building those supportive relationships for growth, which is one of these strategies for you balancing your life as a high achiever, you have to be able to communicate with people who are headed in the same direction you are, but in a way that is not problematic. So you have to learn to support and you have to learn how to be supported by other people emotionally who are on the same path as you. It is one thing to be able to be open to all your needs and to be able to listen to other people. It's a whole different thing to support other people and accept the support of other people. In fact, in, a, in our group the other day, I was talking to a man in our implementation program. This brother was just, he was, he'd been complaining about his 50 hour work weeks. He'd been complaining about how he worked 12 hours every day in a physically demanding job. And he just never seemed to have the time for anything because his energy levels were so low and he just wasn't able to get into a relationship, do anything in the programs. And he'd been complaining about this stuff for the entire year, like from the beginning of 2024 at the time of me recording this. And so, you know, I started trying to help him out, just, you know, reaching out. A lot of brothers were also supporting him and he was completely closed off to it. He didn't want to hear it. Anytime somebody said, well, you know, in the morning, um, why don't you just go out and just listen to the birds? Because he was saying no to it. I can't do this. I can't. And my brother was like, bro, just go out in the morning. Just take a deep breath and just sit in the silence of the morning if you feel like everything is just moving too fast for you. And he was like, it's too dark in the morning when I wake up. I have to wake up at 4 a.m. to go to work. There are no birds out at that time. There's nothing out there. And we were just like, wow, bro. He's finally opening up and understanding that he needs to be kind to himself. But I shared that to illustrate 
how so many men are not allowing themselves to be supported. You're just not used to it. And when I see men who are so busy complaining about their life and how hard their life is, they are often not supporting anybody else. They have nothing kind to say to anyone else. You will never see a supportive comment from them. If you take a look at your life right now, you ask yourself, like, do I feel like life is being very hard on me right now? Do I feel like I can't catch a break? I want you to ask yourself, when was the last time that you were of service to somebody else? When was the last time you supported somebody else? Go out there and do that. One of my mentors used to say, fix nervous with service. If you feel nervous about your future, if you feel nervous about your current situation, if you feel nervous about something you did in the past that might be coming back to haunt you, go out there and support somebody else. You will feel so much better. And that is one of the strategies for actually building supportive relationships. Next is set boundaries. You have to choose relationships that are going to uplift you. And you have to stay away, man, from those that are draining you of energy. Many of you choose to go and find relationships that drain you of energy. Some of you at work will purposely, especially if you're a leader, go and find the people that you know are screwing up all the time or they are still learning. They're not the best at what they do or they are unreliable. And that's one of the first things you're going to do. Why? Because you have built an unhealthy habit of getting negative validation from that person. You want to see, okay, let me see the next thing this person has screwed up. I keep telling them to do X, Y, Z, but they're never reliable. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to find out what they're doing. That is a relationship that is draining you of energy. That is somebody that you need to let go of or set a straight, a clear boundary with. Some of you can't wait to jump back into a negative text thread that you were having with a family member. You're waking up in the morning, you're pulling out your phone. You're like, what did they say last? What did they say from that conversation we were having yesterday? Please protect your peace and set boundaries. I do it with clients too. If a client becomes too draining, I'm not here to be Mother Theresa. We will do everything we can. But if we notice that a client is just draining the energy of everybody in our in our group, in our community, I'll kick you the fuck out. If we've done everything we can, we will not have people who are emotional vampires in our group. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that we aren't compassionate. We understand that men come in with a lot of pain. Men come in also seeking validation, and we will support you. But after a certain amount of time, if you choose not to do so, and you choose to use the group as a place to just suck energy from people, you got to go. Gentlemen, do the same in your life. And finally, you want to be with people and build relationships where you can grow together. You want to surround yourself with people who are focused on growth. Why? Because their energy will fuel yours. Some of you who are within our program have already met some of my friends, like Vivek, like Vincent, like Andrew and Prashant. These are people who are, they're highly skilled people. They're highly successful people. In fact, they're so successful that right now they've started coming in as guests and they've started consulting in many of our programs. Like Andrew now is the head coach at the Dating Reboot program. Vec, who has a seven-figure net worth and is teaching men how to do the same, especially if you have a job and you want to learn how to retire as a millionaire, he teaches men how to do that. But all of these men are instrumental to my success because they are my friends. They were my friends first. They were my, were my friends when we were all trying to survive off $1 happy meals at McDonald's back in college days. But we grow together. You want to surround yourself with people who are focused on growth. That energy is so powerful when it comes to generating momentum for success. Now, let's talk about the next coping strategy. Again, don't get overwhelmed by all the strategies that I'm sharing. These are all things that I shared within the program. I talked about this at the beginning of the year, where I said that one of the quickest ways for you to accomplish your goals in 2024 this year is for you to Imagine the person you're going to be when you hit all the goals that you've written down at the beginning of the year and start acting like that person. So this is one of the strategies. You want to firstly visualize your future self. Picture how your future self acts, how he thinks, how he feels, and then use this vision to guide your actions today. Secondly, 
you want to start aligning all the choices that you make to bring you closer to your future self. Start making decisions that bring you closer to that person. Before you make a decision, ask yourself, is this a decision that is going to move me closer to that future version of myself who is free of pornography, who has sexual control, who is a happier person, who is in a great relationship, even if it's in a very small way? Third is practice right now. Please do not wait for the future. Do not wait for this podcast to end before you start embodying who you want to be. If you hit pause and you have to do something else, immediately take a moment to visualize your future self and ask yourself, is this next thing I'm doing, is it in alignment with my future self? How would my future self do this? And then start taking actions that reflect that identity today. Fourth is start building habits for success. Form habits that your future self would follow. Things like daily routines or having different mindset shifts. And then finally, learn how to play the long game. Understand that growth takes time. You have to commit to the process and trust the consistency that that consistency is going to lead to transformation over time. I'll say it again. You've got to play the long game. I'm the sort of person who likes to play the long game, but I will not lie to you guys. I fall off a lot. I feel that as I grow older, I'm falling off even more because I feel that I have less patience for certain things. So what I've learned to do is up my accountability. So my accountability is on another level, which means that I know that there are certain things I have to do that they're going to pay off for me greatly in the future. I get accountability. I have daily reminders for them. I have people on my team tell me to do those things. I have my executive assistants literally make space on my calendar to put do this thing, go for your run, study this language. It's right there on my calendar. And before a meeting starts, my assistants ask me, have you done X, Y, Z? And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I didn't do it. I'm going to go back and do it right now. That's the level of accountability that's necessary. You can do it by being a part of the group. The group keeps you accountable. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, for instance, in the intensive program, you have to stay accountable. You have to list out all the goals. And we don't care. They don't have to be reboot goals. They could just be personal goals that you have for that week and intentions you have. But a byproduct of being in the group is that we'll still help you stay accountable to them. On Wednesday, you have to show up and tell us the progress that you've made from the Monday goal. And on Friday, you have to tell us how close you are to completing that goal as well. Here's the thing. When I share all these different coping strategies, what I often hear is excuses for men, and I know some of you are already thinking this, as to why you can't do any of these things. I'm just going to share the five most common excuses. The first is, JK, you're talking about slowing down. I don't have time to slow down. I need to move fast. You don't understand. I am behind on many things in my life. Okay, here's my response to this. Slowing down in order to build emotional fitness is actually the thing that's going to help you sustain long-term success without burnout. If you want to have longevity in what you are doing, and not just longevity, you want to be recognized, you want to keep growing year after year after year, you must slow down. I know you are looking outwards at many people who seem externally successful right now, Many of these people are a flash in a pan. They will burn out in four, five, six years, seven years maybe. They, they're pushing so much and they will disappear. I know this because I've been coaching successful men for 12 years. And over those 12 years, I have seen many people burn out. I've seen people sell their businesses and disappear. I've seen people's businesses fall apart and they disappear. By disappear, I mean that they have retreated from life. There's nothing as sad as a high achiever who has given up on himself. This is why you must learn to slow down. Second is, some of you, I know some of you are thinking, you're talking a lot about emotions, man, but emotions are distractions for me. Your emotional awareness strengthens your nervous system and it helps you achieve more with less internal conflict. Again, it helps helps you achieve more without all the internal bullshit. 
you want to achieve more. One of the reasons you can't achieve more is you keep hitting these levels where so many emotions are holding you back. There's anger, there's frustration, there's confusion, there's second doubting yourself. They had the emotional highs you experience. Like, oh, I'm going to win. I'm going to be the best. We're going to freaking make it. And then the, the emotional lows, the insecurities. Am I even good enough? Damn, how many years have I been hustling at this? I haven't done anything. Everybody else is so much better than me. You don't have time for these conflicts. In order for you to not experience these conflicts, you have to start spending time on your emotions and becoming aware of them. Another one I hear is that, listen... If I rest, JK, I'm going to lose momentum. You know, I can actually relate to that one. I feel personally, and this is just to demonstrate to you that I'm not perfect and I'm not standing on some fancy pedestal preaching to you. I do lose momentum if I take too many days off from my actual work. I know that for a fact. This doesn't mean that I don't take time off. This summer, I took quite a bit of time off, but I was working on a different project. So I was working on a different business of mine most of the time for about a two-month period. There is a solution to that. If you're like me and you realize that you do lose momentum, if you take too many days off, then take less time off to rest. In my case, I realized that what worked for me was a one-day free day every week. It may not be your thing. Listen, I don't have kids. Some of you have kids. In that case, take two days off. Some of you work things that are very physically and mentally demanding. Most of my time is spent at a desk. So I want to acknowledge that as well. You may need the two days. Please take them off if necessary. But if you work on something that is cognitively challenging, I'm not saying that something that's cognitively challenging is less than something that's physically challenging. I burn a lot of calories with the work that I do, but it's okay to take a day off. So I take a full day off. It's called a rest day and or a free day. And I do nothing that day except things that rejuvenate me. And I do them to such a depth that it feels as if I took a week off energetically, not mentally. I'm still coming back 24 hours later, absolutely refreshed but I feel as if I came back from a vacation because on my free day, I'm going to go get a massage. I'm going to go for a long walk. I'll have some sex or a lot of sex. I'm going to have a great meal. I'm going to watch a movie or catch up with the series with my girl. I'm going to have a nap. Then I'm probably going to have more sex. <laughs> and then I'm going to go like do yoga. I'm going to go see a sh Like I'm doing a whole bunch of things. I'm going to have a drink. It's going to be a good day. Rest is vital for your recovery and it can increase your performance and focus when you do take action. Another common one I hear is, JK, I can't afford to show vulnerability. Oh, I just, I just can't be vulnerable, man. Okay. I know this one is challenging. You, it does need some practice. We provide a safe space for that. Here's the thing about vulnerability. It creates deeper connections, which are essential for you to create supportive relationships. When I learned to be vulnerable, let me tell you something that happened with me in all my businesses. When I learned to be vulnerable, people who were partnering with me and working with me started staying with me longer. Some of you may not know this, but Elevated Recovery, the company, almost our entire management are women. Our, almost our entire leadership is women. There are more women in our leadership than there are men. From the client success manager to our CFO, is a woman, client success manager is a woman, operations director is a woman, integrator is a woman. It is women that are running things. Now, we also have men in leadership positions. GT is, is in charge of our, what's the word for it, reboot strategists. Actually, that's it, GT and myself. <laughs> so... Once I became vulnerable, I started being able to attract and keep highly talented, caring women in the company. And this is very powerful because these professional women have the capacity to see things in a way that men can't. And I want to say this, it might be my bias, but if you can hire and train women to be in leadership in your company, go for it. 
I'm a big fan of having alpha males in my company. I'm a big fan of having men who are hard driving in my company. But because we're a company that's based on compassion and on healing, it is so powerful to have women. It is so powerful to have supportive relationships. Women are very social creatures and they know how to connect. And connection is an important part of our business. But anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent on that, vulnerability is going to help you with deeper connections, which you're going to need in business to be successful. Of course, all of this across my different businesses, other ones are also managed by women. The assistants are women, executive assistants are women, property managers are women. Again, I'm saying women, 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 but I would not be able to have any of these relationships with women because of my past behavior with pornography, the way I viewed women, and because I was unwilling to be vulnerable. That vulnerability has led to profit. And then the final thing that comes up for some men is that your belief that success only comes from pushing harder. I need to push harder. I need to push harder. Oh, Lord, brother, true success comes from your ability to balance your efforts with regulating your emotions, your nervous system. And this is what allows you to achieve your putting in a lot of effort. We know that. Pushing. But you need to learn the art of managing your emotions on the other side. And I assure you, all your compulsive behaviors will disappear. Work will become so much more enjoyable. You will become an even greater high achiever. You will become like an ultra marathon runner when it comes to business and achievement. You will have boundless energy. You will enjoy and look forward to your work every single day. It will be optimistic and your abundance will grow and grow and grow. I've done it. Many clients have done it. So put these objections, I'm calling them objections, out of your mind. Start focusing on what is necessary to develop these coping strategies and you will become a man who knows his trauma, but refuses to be defined by it. You will become a man who can face hard emotions and transform them into fuel for your growth. You will become a man that can do hard things without losing yourself. You will become a man that understands that every relationship requires effort and you put in the effort. You will become a man who acts before you feel ready to do things. You don't procrastinate. You will become a man who can shine, who can show all his talent, but does not dim the light of others while doing so. You will become a man who owns his desire for power, for wealth, for health, for happiness, without guilt. You will become a man who believes it is okay to want more. If you want more stuff, it's okay. You're going to go for it. You will become a man who allows himself to receive, to receive compliments, to receive gifts. You will become a man who welcomes abundance in all forms in your life, in your relationship, in your health, in your finances. When it comes to every aspect of your life, you're welcoming. You will become a man who uses your past as wisdom. You learn from your past. It is no longer a barrier to you. You become a man who embraces growth, but you also embrace healing when it is necessary. And finally, you will become a man who starts to see those triggers, those triggers that cause you to use pornography, that cause you to run to sex, that cause you to seek orgasm as a chance to learn and grow and not as setbacks that you need to avoid. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. 
The second way is, if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man, and free yourself from shame, guilt, and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom. 